this is a group of, of uh, Al Qaeda veterans have come from some of them from Pakistan, some of them from from Yemen. Uh, the Al Qaeda affiliate in Yemen, which is obviously uh, uh, attempted attacks against U.S. airliners, and what they're focused on is external threats, external attacks. Uh, unlike the Al-Qaeda uh, uh, affiliate there in Syria that is focused on the Assad regime, these guys are trying to attack the U.S. and Western allies. And how they're doing that is trying to perfect uh, undetectable or hard to detect bombs. These are things that could be hidden in your cell phone or, on your, or in your laptop or in toiletries and, and, and even in clothing uh, like we saw with the underwear bomb. So they are basically have been working on these new bomb designs and the U.S. believes that they were very close to, uh, to, to, to produ producing something that they, could, uh, that they could launch an attack against us. And I, I mentioned this really early on in the program, but it appears that their leader was really closely tied with bin Laden's deputies prior to 9-11, might have even have known about 9-11 before anyone else did other than the top echelon. But he's about, what, 30 or so years old now? He was 19 back then? 30 years old. Right, exactly, and you know this is this guy's been on the on the on the radar for the U.S. officials for many many years. Uh, his name is uh, Musin Al Fadli. He's uh, of Kuwaiti descent, and he was hiding out in Iran for many years. In recent years, they believe U.S. officials believe he's now in Syria, where he's gathered up this sort of all-star team of bomb makers who can uh, attack Western targets. He is blamed for a 2002 attack uh, against a, a French uh, ship uh, in in the in the um, uh, Persian Gulf and against uh, U.S. Uh, troops, Marines in Kuwait. So they know that he has been involved in attacks. He's been mostly a fundraiser, and they now believe he's leading this Khorasan group uh, against uh, the U.S. and against Western targets, Ashley. Apparently there's a $7 million reward out uh, right. for him at this point. I just want to touch again on, you, you mentioned this issue about the, the notion that they've been refining and fine-tuning their ordinance right. so that they could hide it in things like iPhones or those little shampoo bottles, etc. But has the administration or anybody within the administration indicated what kind of an attack was so imminent? What, what operation was so far down the line that they needed to do this strike because they felt that if they didn't do it now, the toothpaste was out of the tube and they would not be able to track it? Well, you know, that's exactly the, the point, is that I think they've gotten to a point, according to the officials we've talked to, that they, they weren't sure anymore that they could detect it if it goes any further. So that's the reason why these uh, targets were hit overnight. Now, they haven't said what specific attacks there were, but these guys are focused on aviation. That's their number one target. And so the, the view was that it's either flights uh, within Europe or to Europe or to the United States. And, you know, the, the, the point is they had already gotten the materials to construct these uh, types of devices and the fear was you can't wait until something blows up over over New York or Washington you have to hit them now 